Hello, hello. I'm up and at it this morning. Um, well, actually, it's in the afternoon. Um, I have my helper here, Cooper, with me today. Um, today, we're just going to be working on a lot of just little projects um, around. Um, today, I want to finish some drip um, irrigation today um, and a couple of my flower beds. I kind of <laughs> jumped the gun a little bit and I planted my flowers before I even had my drip up. So I've been watering them for over a month and I've just been working on other projects. So now it's kind of getting into where I need to be watering them because um, during the month of July, I'll be gone for two weeks in a row. Um, and so I have a farmer husband and my husband's going to be supposed to be watering for them for me. So if I want my plants to live, um, I'm going to need to have some drip run up for them. Although he does his best, but sometimes he doesn't have all the time in the world being a, a farmer in Nebraska. So yeah, um, I just thought I'd bring you along for my journey today through drip irrigation. And I kind of thought I'd share kind of what I do um, to make it as simple as possible and not having, um, you know, all the smarts in the world about it. So I thought I'd just share kind of how I do it. So here we go. So this right here is the area we're going to be working at. Um, like I said, I kind of set it up before I was even really ready for it. Um, I have a lot of different plants in here. A lot of them are Proven Winners plants, just because I really like Proven Winners plants. I feel like they're um, really good. So I do have different plants in here, and I, last night I started setting up um, along here. You can see a pipe going through here, tubing. But I thought I'd bring you along on the journey of just kind of working through this bed. My thought process was um, before um, all this was just um, grass in here and I would just have to mow it. But I thought it'd be cool. Uh, my husband um, checks cows every night so he, he walks through this path area right here um, to go get to the his pickup to go check the cows. So I thought it'd be really cool to do like a cool path in here. So these are all new fresh plants um, in here this year um, and so it's just trying something different now um, and I kind of will get into more details of how I kind of um, went through it all but I thought I would just share kind of what it looks like but for right now I need to go get my supplies um, and so I'll go do that now oh my goodness so um, last night I was working on stuff later and then um, me and my husband went for a horseback ride so um, I kind of just left everything in my wagon. Um, this is not sponsored, but this is a gorilla cart. Um, as you can see here, gorilla cart, and I absolutely love it. It's a zero turn gorilla cart. Um, it has a dump feature so I can pull this handle and I can dump it and I love it. I can also um, switch this over so I can switch this handle here and I can make it to be pulled behind a four wheeler or um, something else so it's super nice um it's really large um i think i'll link it down below for you guys because i love gorilla carts so much they're very sturdy they're durable so um love this so i'm gonna take this cart it's got most of my stuff in it but i need to do a clean out for sure of my cart before i even get started Even get started with um, my garden stuff I gotta feed the kittens so we recently were given um, a few week old kittens so before I even get anywhere I need to I need to fed the, feed them because they are for sure crying at me because I have not feed them fed them Ugh, my language this morning also I do have a deeper voice today because I am currently just getting over a head cold so there is that, um, and if you hear any noise in the background, it's the tractor coming in with my hot husband. There's my husband in the in the tractor. There. I am at it. I do need to feed our bucket calf that I have. Her name is Florence, so I will be doing that too. I just need to mix up the milk for both the cats and um, our bottle cat that we have.
Florence eats, I usually walk up to the chickens and I let them out. This was a, a greenery shed that we've converted into half of it a chicken shed and half of it will hopefully be a garden shed. So. Hey ladies, are you ready to come out? As to what I will be using today, um, I will only be using my half inch supply line, my drip with emitter holes every six inches, my quarter inch here, um, my kneeling mat, and my Felco twos, which are just my shears here that will cut the tubing. I have my punch tool and my um, connectors. Here, I'll use these smaller ones and that's it that I'll be using today that I know of. Plans do change. They are susceptible to change. If you hear my dogs in the background, don't mind them. I have a new puppy. There's Piper and she's a collie, so basically like a lassie. And then Cooper, he's an Australian Shepherd. So little sweethearts, but they tend to play. So anyway, let's just get to it and we'll begin um, putting in um, my drip around certain plants. So last night, while I was waiting for my husband um, to ride horse, um, I laid out a half-inch supply line. Supply line that started here, it goes up along here, um, and it tees off. One goes over that way to that corner right there, and then another one supply line goes up this way and around there and back and connects back to each other. So I have an elbow that I attached right here and then a T that I attached right here. And what I did with this is that I teed off this way and I went up here and I went behind these pots here. Um, and then I ran drip into each one of these three pots here. So those are all on Drip, but they're not set up to be watered yet because that is what we're planning on doing today so they do need to be, be watered and learn do this process actually correct you would have done um, cleared the sod away which I did not do I put newspaper down so in the video you might see some trash swooping around um, our dogs kind of scraped it all up so I'm kind of having to modify and maybe I should have done something else besides that but I was trying to do it quickly um, we had people coming over and I wanted it to be done and sometimes I'm impatient with stuff like that. So that's what's kind of going on. Um, so I put technically what you should have done really if you were to do it the correct way. Um, do as I say, not as I do is what they say. Um, you would have prepped your area, you know, you would have removed the sod, which I should have done. And then you would put your drip down, then put your plants in and then mulch where I did things totally backwards. I literally put the plants in, then I did um, the paper. I put that newspaper down, then I put the mulch on top, and now I'm putting up drip. So it's completely backwards, and I should have just taken the time just to do the drip in the beginning, but I did not want to. So that's kind of where we're at. To save you some steps, I would definitely recommend putting your, removing the side if you're doing something similar to what I'm doing, um, and just kind of making your own flower bed here. 
Um, later on I can go through what plants I planted, but for right now, let's just get into how I'm gonna set each plant up on drip. And what I like to do first is I remove all the mulch from around the plant. This is a rubecchia. Um, this is a plant I work at a, a nursery um, for the months of April to beginning of June. So I got this one from my nursery up there. It's a rubecchia. Uh, that is not true, hold on. It's a blanket flower, not a rubecchia. It's a blanket flower um, and I really like it. And um, so I remove the soil from around the plant. I then take my punch tool, which you I got this from Home Depot. My punch tool here, it has a little puncher. If you can see that right there, it has a puncher. I place it on my drip tube so that my puncher, punched hole is towards my plant. I punch it and then I end up with this hole in it just like that. And what I do is I take my end of my drip tubing here and I'm gonna take, it will focus. It's not gonna focus, but um, there it goes. I take the end of my drip tubing here and I pick out a connector I literally just spilt this whole entire thing in the back of my um, cart so good work Regina I'm gonna find a tea connector somewhere in okay new plan I did not find any of my tea connectors because I cannot sift through this and see them to save my life so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna just take a normal connector here which is just a oops dropped it um, a straight connector and we are going to put it into our drip here it's kind of hard to do with the camera, but we'll see what we can do. Now we're going to measure how much we need to put around our plant. So what I do is I'm going to punch this one in here. So you can see there's that hole. So we're just going to kind of get it to where you can see. Going to till you hear it click till we get here. It click there. So it clicked in here. Though my hand was blocking it, so now that's in place. We're still trying to teach the puppy to stay out of the flower beds along with that puppy. So I clicked it into place here. So now I'm going to kind of measure around. And I, what I want to do is I want to take a circle around the plant. So I want about to right here because um, there's a middle hole right there and I want this one to get a little more water. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut it right there. So with my uh, Falcos or my clippers here, I'm going to take and I'm going to cut it this right above here, just like that. And then we're going to put another ender in to it. So now I have another ender and we are going to wrap it around the plant and connect it in just like we did the first one. So just repeat the first step. So we are going to plug the end of this one here um, into this again because it's just going to drip around it. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, make an another hole just like what we did before with our punch tool here. So we're gonna stick it down, make sure you have your punchy thing facing towards your plant or the direction you want. And I want it to be right around in there. So we're gonna take it and we're going to squeeze. And again, that makes a little, a punched hole right there. And I am going to push it in. Try and push it in, it's hard to do with the camera. Punch it in, you get a snap, and then cover it up with mulch. And that will emit water um, and help keep your plants watered without you having to do it. Okay, so um, we just got finished with the one um, blanket flower and I'm going to do it on all the rest and I hopefully will speed it up for you guys so that way it's 
not so fast. Well, not so slow for you guys. So it's the same process through all the plants. Um, it's just setting up drip for them. This is kind of what I'm doing because I want them to get a little more water up here. Um, and I want to be the water to be concentrated. I don't want to waste the water. I do have that um, brown drip tubing, but I don't want to waste the water. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, it's targeted watering. Um, that way I don't have random stuff that gets watering that doesn't need it. So. Gone tomorrow like a spark fly in the wind. We all look up to our fathers, all our lives if all is right, and we all need a mother's when the day is dark. Drums of war are getting louder A sound you never heard before Gonna come to your town Gonna find your corner And we'll soon be knocking on your door Someone pulls an easy trigger Puts another His blood runs with his life And the drums of war are getting louder A sound you never heard before Gonna come to your town Gonna find your corner And we'll soon be knocking on your door So long buried in the snow Yes, here we are Shining diamonds Burning bridges as we go And the drums are warm Are getting louder A sound you never heard before Gonna come to your town So for this shrub, this one's going to be different because um, the hose is farther away and I don't want to just use and waste water from here to the thing, to the shrub here. Um, I cannot think of the name of this one right now, but oh goodness, I'll probably think of it later. But anyway, so I'm going to take the supply line that does not have emitter holes and I'm going to bring it up to here um, and wrap it around and then I will attach it to this. And then I will show you when I get done kind of what it looks like. This is what I did. I have the supply line right here. Um, don't chew on my phone. Um, I have a supply line that hooks into here with no emitter holes. Oh, sorry, my puppy Piper. Oh, I've got to slide her over. Okay. So I have a supply line right here um, that I hooked in. It doesn't have any emitter holes. Um, and then I 
put in a straight coupler and I attached it to one with the mitter holes that have um, mitter holes every six inches here um, that comes around and then I cut it and I put a straight coupler in and I put in a, um, a supply line here with no mitter holes so that I'm not wasting the water within here and it's just kind of targeting around um, the bottom of this plant which this plant, the shrub I should say, is called a purple sand cherry. So um, it's a beautiful plant. I got it where I work at a nursery here locally in Nebraska. Um, and it grows, I think, six to eight feet tall and wide. It's a zone five. Um, I am a zone 5A, so it works out good. Um, it flowers in the spring and then um, in the fall. I don't know if you can see really this red color leafed here. This is color um, it will be in the fall. Um, and then during the spring, summer um, months, it will be this beautiful purple color, which I really like a lot. So there's our new kitty down there playing. So this is a beautiful shrub and it will fill in this spot right here really nice. So I will finish up the rest of the plants though. Okay, so right as I was getting done with the drip in that one section in front of um, the back of my house actually, I heard a chicken, which we had let out, um, and our dog Cooper, who's, he's only a year and we just, he was rehomed and, um, just a year ago, he was trying to get a chicken. Now he's already gotten two chickens. So if you guys have any advice on how to make your dogs stop chasing chickens or in fact eating them, um, go ahead and send it on over to me in the comments. I would be very much thankful and grateful for any advice I could get for that. Um, I grew up on a farm, but our chickens... Well, we have a few things where you, like, we could tie them to their necks, but that hasn't helped or anything. So if you have any advice, please um, comment below and you can help me out because I love him, but you have to learn not to chase chickens. And while I was working, Piper over here uh, tore open the bag, so. So let me show you, um, oh goodness, looking at my kittens here. Let me show you what I did, what it looks like, um, and see how that looks. So what I did was um, I set each one of these up and circled drip. I need to go back through with mulch here. I know it's um, bright, so it's kind of hard to see, but I did show you the supply line that went all the way around the pots here, all the way over to the other side. Um, and then I just um, teed off from each one. So I have a purple cher sand cherry shrub in the back, which I did talk about. I do have proven winners here. Um, three at last roses there's one there is two and there is three i have three perennial grasses one i don't know what happened to it one did not make it back there um i have perennial grass there the featherweed grasses one two i have um new dawn climbing roses there's one there there's one there and there's one there um i'm hoping for it to this is just a big huge blank wall um, just an empty wall here, and I'm really hoping for it to to climb up and go vertically up there. I do have delphiniums, but my dogs have just trampled the trash out of them. Poor things. There's one here, there's one here, and then there was one here. And then, again, I have the blanket flowers right here. I have one that kind of drifts along. There's one here, here, and there. They're just um, blanket flowers. There's the tag for it. And then I have one little one right here that was given to me at work because it was just a scrawny one. Um, I have Rebecca. This is actually Rebecca. I have tufts of grafts that I need to deal with, but here's Rebecca. I have one, one, two, and there is one buried right there. And then I have chocolate chip. I cannot think of the name of these. Oh, my shadow's in there. These are chocolate chips, so they bloom um, like a vibrant blue in the spring so I have one two three of those and then um, I do have lamb's ear right here so that's kind of what's in this bed um, and then these are just about to bloom they bloom like a beautiful um, coral color and they have buds all over them so does that one right there full of buds this one got nipped in our cold snap earlier this year um, so what I have left to do in this bed is I need to um, tee off down there by that purple sand cherry. And I need a, there is a faucet hose that runs 
all the way down there behind our deck back there um, and I need to run a supply hose that way and then connect it to our faucet so that's something I might do today or might do tomorrow I think I kind of want to do it today because I want to see all this watered um, and then I need to get more mulch to cover up the spots that are uncovered because you can see my hose right in there in different areas and then I also need to edge this bed so when I when I did it like I said I did the steps in the totally wrong order so you can see the beds kind of wonky through here so I really do need to um, straighten that up and take a straight edge along it so that's something we need to do um, and then later on I'll do this side of the bed over here so I think the last thing that I need to do with her um, in this video is that I need to again tee off over there by the purple sand cherry shrub in that area um, and take it along the back here and do a supply line to the hydrant back there and set it up with a timer so let's do that So I just cut the supply line here, I cut it in half, and I am going to be teeing off. So I'll put this in here and then I'll have a supply line that reaches out down this way. So this is what I'm going to use to attach my um, hydrant, so my faucet, up to my drip system. Thank you, Cooper. So. And there's a cat in the tree. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to use to attach up to my system. Um, there is, it's, the brand is Rainbird. Um, and it has um, a PSI, um, 25 PI, PSI pressure regulator. Um, it has a mesh filter, so it won't have any backflow into your um, system, but has everything it like shows you where everything goes which is really nice but anyway um, I'll be using this to attach to my so the drip tube will go on the end of here I would put it right up next to the faucet the faucet is right there but I of course I have an air conditioner that is blaring outside so you won't be able to really hear me so I was just gonna show you um, kind of what it would look like from over here Here's my supply line. It tees in over there by the purple sand cherry, and it goes along all the way underneath my deck here. Um, and now we're going to tee it in to here. I do have a quick connect onto here, but we'll take that off real quick. Again, I I use this is um, plumber's tape here. It just kind of seals it up. Um, that's what it looks like. So to put it on. I take this part off here and we're gonna screw this top part on because it's easier that way and it does have a screw for you to be able to tighten it so I'll put it on like that and then I measure up my hose over here and see as it's trailing along there you can see where it comes into um, and I'm just gonna bring it right into it so I'm going to kind of guesstimate a little bit where I want to cut it um, probably around and right here is where I will do my cut. So I'm going to grab my Falcos and I'm going to cut right in there. Then as I go, take this here. We're going to take this bottom piece off here. Um, and it has, you're going to screw this part. It screws up all the way up here to the top. You want it to be up to this part. We're going to put this in the top of this hose. Sometimes it can be a little squ oh, squirrely, but it does fit on here because I have done it before, but you just kind of have to really push at it. And it goes like that. So once you get it on, it's on here. Um, so once you get um, your adapter piece onto this, this screws down. So it's going to prevent it from leaking. So you kind of twist this piece down this way. And I'm twisting and it's just getting closer and closer and it's pinching it basically. So it's crimping it so you don't have to worry about water leaks or it blowing off. So we're going to do it as tight as possible here. And then you're going to hook this up again. I usually use um, 
plumber's tape on here, but I didn't. I don't have any on hand. So I'm gonna screw this next piece on, and from there it will go straight up to the hose here, and we'll screw this in to here. Okay, so we got it all set up here. Um, right now, this one is on because it's going to my raised bed garden. I have this hose that runs and it supplies the line there. Um, so this will run and supply the line back there. So I have everything all connected up. Um, there's that part that I really tightened hard. Um, so now I'm going to put the supply on for this one. And I'm going to shut this one off. And this ho faucet does leak, but... Oh, so I'm getting sprayed with water, but so now I have that on here um, So this leaks nothing else looks like it's It's leaking yet, um, but that is leaking only because we need to put in a new hydrant on here so the supply line runs along the back of that so then We can go look and see if it is emitting water or if we have any leakage problems um, so uh, let's see if we can find a good example of where water's coming out of. Oh, that's not a good spot for water to be coming. So as you can see in here, it pulls water out and it just puts it towards the root zone. So it just pools out of it. This is a system, um, that works for me. Um, it's not necessarily saying it's going to work for you. Um, if you have enough rainfall where you don't have to drip irrigate or um to water every day fantastic i'm jealous i'm jealous that you have something like that here in um northeast nebraska we don't really have that um, we don't have consistent water to where my plants are going to be happy um so this is just me sharing kind of the journey along the way of me transitioning my garden into where it's more easy maintenance um easily able to be maintained and especially when I'm gone or I'm not here my husband who works as a farmer um, It's hard for him to take care of it. So I'm hoping that this will just help you guys and Just hopefully that we can grow together. No pun intended. There's a bug flying around me um, in our in our gardening spaces together and just um, I hope this is relatable and I hope that you're able to to learn something from it. So Until next time or whenever I post again um, Thank you guys very much for watching. I do really appreciate it and just coming on into my neck of the woods and in my corner. So until then, bye guys. Toodles.